Hi all, welcome to this, another video, um, more aimed at teaching staff um, than students, so like I said in the last video guys, uh, if you're a student having a look into this, you're more than welcome, um, but the value here will maybe be a, a little more limited than it would be for some of our, my other content. Um, but in today's video, what we're going to be looking at is some more things on using Teams, and particularly how to make the most out of the assignments tab in Teams to help streamline and make the kind of the issuing and collection of work as efficient as possible. So with that said, uh, if I push myself down out of the corner again, you can see that we have got Teams. Now this is my Teams and like I said in the last video, this is my test team that I use for mucking about with things and if you don't already have a test team set up, I really, really recommend it. Um, it's just a great thing to have handy for kind of pushing things out into to nobody to see whether or not it works. Now, in the last video, I went through some stuff on Class Notebook, showing you how to distribute things to, to large numbers of students, uh, to whole classes, um, and how to then collect work back in. And it's a really, really brilliant thing to use, and it's something I'm going to be referring to uh, in today's video, kind of briefly. But one of the big criticisms, one of the big critiques that comes with that is that if your class is largely just using Teams, and they're not quite there yet, with checking in on Class Notebook frequently, um, they don't get this kind of big pop-up that says, ding, 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 you have work to do. And we know how important that is. Getting that um, nice cue can make sure that people are aware that they have tasks to do, and that's something that the Assignments tab does give you. So can we have our cake and eat it too? Can we have the best of both worlds? And the answer is yes. Now, if we go into the Assignments tab, and it takes a wee minute to load. Um, you'll see that because this is a test page, there's loads of stuff in it that hasn't been handed in because it was just me mucking about. Um, but if I go into this and I hit create, so if I hit create an assignment, and uh, I'll think of an extremely, extremely engaging name. Um, let's go for class notebook test. Extremely fantastic. Um, use this space to write instructions. Uh, and you get the idea over here. There is, you know, you fill in this as you go. Um, now, a couple of bits that I want to point out. The add rubric section is something that, um, I'll admit, it's not something that I'm using hugely yet, but it's something that's got great potential. You can see here a couple of examples of where I have started to use it. And what this is really good for is for giving your students a really clear understanding of what the, what, what you expect of them in a task. You know, if I hit the S3 volcanic eruption study, uh, that I made earlier and I hit next. You can see here that I've kind of split this into gold, silver and bronze and then areas of development and there's some different things in here that I have just put that will help me give feedback to each of my students. So I'm just going to include this one for the sake of right now, it saves me making a new one and then this then gets attached. Now if you are in a, a, a curricular area where using points for different assignments is something that could be valuable, um, you can add points as well. Because I've tagged this rubric on it, mucks about with the points a little bit, so we're not going to do that. But you can see that we've got the ability to do that. Now, uh, where you want to assign this to is you would probably just assign this to your channel. If you've got sub-channels set up in any of your teams, and for instance you only wanted to go to one of them, you could certainly do that here. Um, and you can change that. And again, in here you can change, if you only want something to go to a couple of students, you can change that. If you want to go to everybody, you can have it set as all students. Now, one of the bits that I really do want to point out, and it's something that I think a lot of people are aware of already, but I want to show it anyway. Um, after due date, we've got this kind of edit bit. Now, schedule to assign in the future is something that is hugely useful. Um, we all know how trying it can be to try and deal with things, um, you know, right in the exact heat of the moment, and having the ability to forward plan when you do have time to do things is very, very useful. So if, for example, um, you know, it's, it's, it happens to be Sunday at 20 past four right now, if this was some time that I wanted to sit and get some work organized for a bunch of classes on Monday, knowing that I wouldn't have the time tomorrow to do that, I could do this, I could schedule it for Monday the 9th, I can tell it what time I want it to go out. I can really mess with my class and make it go out at four in the morning and they'll think I'm up really early. Um, this is stuff that you can do to make your life a bit easier. And equally, you can set a due date and you can set a due time. And one thing that is possibly useful, possibly not dependent on your approach, there is a closed date as well. If you've got a task that you're saying, no, 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 this just must be in by then and if it's not in too bad, you can close the task off as well. Now, in the name of what I want to show you guys today, I'm not going to hit done on this. If I did hit done, then 
Um, well, I'll hit done right now and you'll see what it does. It just shows you here that that's when it's going to be due. I'm going to go back into edit and I'm going to take the schedule off. I'll leave the close date on um, and we can see that we've got this here. Now, other things that we want to be able to do. Um, if we add resources, that's what I was looking for. Now, in here you can, as a rule, you can add in files, you can add in any things like that, which is really, really useful. But let's say you are wanting to use Class Notebook. You want the guys in there because for that review student work feature. This now has the function where you can click Class Notebook, you can click on whichever bit of work you want. Now I'm just going to go for using the teacher only space um, to do test assessment. Um, I'm going to attach that. Now, this is going to do a couple of things that are really, really useful. It takes a minute. It's going to ask me where it wants me to push it. Um, in the name of making this obvious, I'm going to put it somewhere that doesn't already exist. Um, and then this happens. So I'm going to hit assign. So my assignment is ready to go. This is it. I've pushed it out. My class now have this. Now, if I go back to the post section, it has appeared to you, and this is everything's pinged because I've got some things open. So it's appeared here, the class will get to see this. If I go into the one that I've got set up as my student, uh, which is this one, which is James Bond, um, and I then go into here. So you can see that he, if I refresh the page, he's actually got, I didn't need to refresh the page, um, it's came through on this side. So he's received this ping that says, you've got some work that needs done. And we go, right, okay, view assignment. And it'll take a minute because it always does. And this is the view that the students get. He can see the instructions that he's been left. He can see the rubric that's attached to the task so that he knows what he needs to do um, to achieve the different levels. And then if they then click on this, test assignment, assessment, takes him into his class notebook, and we can see this is a blank one. So if, for those that have watched the previous video, you've seen this assessment, it's the same just daft default template that I pulled together in a couple of minutes. Um, and then if I just really quickly um, and James, so I'm going to click Canberra, I'm going to throw that over there. I'm not going to try and draw a duck live because it'll go wrong. Um, and 34 um, is going to be my answer for this. And he says, right, okay, I'm done. That was all I could do. We can see up here it's updating and it's saving for him. So it's just syncing now and it's done. So yeah, it's close. Yeah, it's hand in. There's a treasure chest that gets stolen by some form of octopus. Um, and, and that's my student done. What about, what does this look at from the teacher point of view now? So I'm now going to go back here and we are back as Mr. Donlin. So I got into my assignments tab. And this will take a minute. I got into OneNote tests and you can see that I've got one of one handed in. So I click on this. James Bond says he's handed it in. I can also go, well, well, hang on a minute. There's nothing here. Now this is where you can click on the OneNote and it'll take you. It'll open this up and then I can go into my class notebook and go into review student work. Uh, I put that in the quizzes just there, uh, in the notes, sorry. Uh, test assessment, next. James Bond. And there's what he threw in. And I can I can mark that as we took, we've discussed in the previous video. You know, I can just add marks straight onto it. I can leave an audio recording. And one thing that I didn't actually mention in the last one is that once I've marked it, I can select to lock that and hit apply. Now this then means that the student can't edit this page anymore. This means that it's locked out. So if you've issued a test um, or just a piece of work that you don't want the student to be able to review, perhaps you're keeping it for uh, a record of how they have progressed with, uh, with a particular uh, style of task, um, you can keep that locked. So you they can still see it, they can still go back and review it, but they can't edit it, it's only you that can do that. It would allow you to do this. So I could then, right, so that's that done. Um, let's just for the sake of actually adding something, I'm gonna draw it, okay, so this is right, uh, that's wrong, and we didn't get a duck, so I can get an angry cross. Um, and this is gonna sync up, and it has synced, uh, and then that is us, so I can close this, I can close this, uh, I think so what we're saying, but it should be. Uh, right, now I've got options, so I can either enter some feedback here, um, and what very commonly you might actually just type in here is C class notebook, because very often that's where your feedback's going to go, because you've been working down that review student work feature, and it lets you do it really smoothly. Or you could of course put your feedback in here if that was something you preferred, and you can hit return, we hit close, 
Now we can see that that has been returned. Uh, we can also see that it's got a little bit of feedback too. Now if I again flick over to here, and you actually see there was a pop-up squeaked in there actually. Um, but if I go back, uh, test assessment, uh, completed OneNote tests, and... Uh, 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 oh yeah, there it is, sorry. Uh, feedback says see class notebook, then James can open up his class notebook. And all right, okay, Mr. Dolman has left me some feedback on that piece of work. I know that it's here. It was in my notes because that's where Mr. Dolman put it this time. And here it is. And we can also see that it says this page is locked and can't be edited this time. So, he goes, oh no, I, the, the, I didn't draw a duck, I forgot. You can't go back in after the fact and then say, oh look, I did draw a duck, you told me that that was wrong. Um, it just means that these things remain secure. Um, not that anybody would ever do that, of course. Um, but that's that's all there. So I'm going to draw this one to a close here, guys. Hopefully that's been useful. Um, it's just some ways in how you can integrate OneNote and Class Notebook more into your teaching, more into the assessing of material. Obviously in that assignments tab, you can push out Word documents, you can push out whatever else you might want to utilise, um, and you can link that into OneNote or not as you wish. So hopefully this has all been useful, folks. Uh, and this is how I'm going to end this year. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch up with you all later. Bye.